minutes. Ten minutes. Yes. All right. I'm actually gonna get you collect weapons and upgrades along the way. Now, do those go from game to game, or is every game like a brand new game? Because, like, on one hand, I enjoy games that start fresh, like, uh, you know, like StarCraft or something, where it starts fresh every single time. But I also enjoy games where it's like, this is progressing, you know, and you've, like, built up this account that has, like, maybe you have to beat it with these five, one of these five ships to unlock the other ships, or, okay. Every game is brand new from the start. Well, that has its own validity. I'll definitely be interested in, uh you know to that and it's and it's 40 bucks from what I've heard and it's in beta or is it out like, I don't know I should just look it up FTO okay master the fight Says nine dollars. Wow. And it's cross platform. Yes. I've been so bummed out with the number of games that have been coming out that are Windows only. Killing me. Killing me. Um great. That was awesome. Nine bucks is totally reasonable. I have spent so much money in the last few weeks on the wedding and I'm sure she would be thrilled when we combine finances to be like, where'd all this last money go? Oh, well, I bought like 10 games, so sorry I spent $500. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm a financially responsible adult <laughs> with a real job. I'd be living just like I thought I would when I was when I was a kid. Man, when I'm making all that money, just think about how many games I could buy. And Slurpees. Alright. So is anybody in here that doesn't remember where we were on what we kind of did last time? PA got kickstarted? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, this kickstart idea, I am loving it. And, you know, I wasn't sure when I first saw it uh, it had already kind of gathered enough steam to be credible, but I still wasn't sure if it was going to work well for our industry, specifically, like for gaming. Uh, but I, I think it's great. I think it's it's awesome that people can kind of opt in, and that's awesome. Okay, RCM Games. Um, okay. Uh, then let me turn off this live warning and kind of show you around. So what we completed last time is we completed the track for our alcohol. So it, it dumps everything here that's needed for alcohol. So that is your barrels, and uh, which is a common thing to forget when linking stockpiles to stills. They'll wonder why their stills seem broken, but they won't have barrels in the stockpiles and it has to have everything. It's all or nothing. Once you link a stockpile, they can pull from nowhere else. So you have to have any odd materials that would be needed, um, such as fuels or containers or whatever's necessary for the good. And then it comes over here, and the first thing it picks up is all of our freshly planted things. And I split those into brewable and non-brewable foods. So the non-brewable is pretty much everything. And then the brewable I went through and I just made this whole brewable plants. And it picks up those. And then it heads down and it picks up uh, the same kind of thing from our trade depot. Picks up brewable plants and barrels, just in case we trade for those. Then it goes down to my carpenter shop. Um, so it comes over here, does this crazy loop-de-loop. -loop. Um, picks up from our trade depot, just like a brewable plant and barrel stockpile. Uh, and then it comes and picks up 
empty barrels from our our, uh, our carpenter shop. And our carpenter shop is set to filter as uh, cages, barrels, and everything else. Uh, everything else that would be made down here is pretty much going to go in a furniture stockpile. So that's fine. We can just dump it. But uh, cages we're going to want to send to their own stockpile, and barrels we're going to want to send to their own stockpile. And if we want to filter this out more, then we can add to it later. That's not a problem. Everything in Dwarf Fortress is fixable. And then it goes back on its way. And we picked that order solely from the mindset that um, plants, it, they go bad if they sit out in the field too long. And if they don't have anywhere to harvest to. And so once a minecart's full, it starts bypassing the other stops. And it'll just pick it up on its next lap. So we want, it, the empty cart needs to prioritize the plants. And then from there, it needs to pick up more plants, and then from there, barrels. Barrels are the lowest priority, uh, but eventually it would, it'll pick it all up. So we got that done, and then we started, and we actually, I think, completed right before we got off the uh, wood stockpile. And the wood stockpile is a little different than other stockpiles because it's not going to have three stops, one to dump, one to pick up from its primary harvest site, and one to pick up from the trade depot, which is its like secondary harvest site, because you can trade for just about anything, so we like to build that in for later when we're just buying everything. And because wood is generally harvested from above your trade depot, so wood being harvested from the surface and from these layers up here is going to have to pass the trade depot anyway, so we'll just bring it down to the trade depot and we'll just store all our wood here. Um, and then that way it'll be quick. It can clear out those like six real quick, dump it there, and then that's the only input for a carpenter workshop. So that's a really simple, just like A to B minecart system. So, um, yeah, RCM, I think you even have a dwarf. I went through and I named, I didn't have anything to do during my precast one time, I was home early, and so I, I precasted uh, naming dwarves after followers. So I haven't gone back through and caught it up. The only one that's died, I believe, is Scion. Um, and once I finish naming everybody, I'm going to make a spreadsheet, I'm going to start keeping death counts, and Scion will get re-added in as soon as I have more dwarves. I think I have more dwarves than I have followers right now, so he could actually get named as soon as I get that death count spreadsheet up. But, uh, and then I'll name them numbered, so it'll be like Scion 2. And, uh, we'll see, we'll see who gets luckier. But yeah, thinking in terms of minecarts totally changes everything. Because before we kind of segmented things based on task, right? And we, and we did, okay, well what is the dwarf doing? And, and everything was centered on the task. And so it's like, well, we'll have them sleeping over here, that's a task. Well, them eating over here, that's a task. Well, them working over here, that's a task. We'll have them harvesting over here, that's a task. And so it's like blocked out and your whole fort is formed that way. And now that we can automate all the travel, we don't have to have the dwarves travel that way anymore. So we can start to center things around dwarves. So if I want a craftsman to become a master craftsman, his time is a lot more valuable in walking, especially when I can just have a track that's not going to skill up in anything, do it for me. So if that's the case, what all does he need to never be done? I want him to literally pick something up, work on it, send it over here. So he skills up fast and once he is skilled up, I get the most output out of him as possible so that I can have more dwarves free, so that I can kind of just increase the throughput of my entire fort. So, these rooms that are next to it right here, uh, these are the bedrooms. So he's gonna have his bedroom, and he's gonna be—he's gonna walk all this, all of three steps. He's gonna pick up from his his wood stockpile. He's gonna come over here. He's gonna make it, and he's gonna go drop it off in one of these. And that's it, done. And and out—I mean, he's gonna be contained to this like ten by ten ish space. So he really should never be anywhere outside of this hundred blocks outside of eating and drinking, which we could provide him with, but he needs socializing. So we will let those kind of be done in a center hub, and that'll be commute time that I haven't thought of a way to lose. Um, maybe once a, other, a couple of the other casters kind of, maybe some of them kind of tackle this mindset and get their interpretation, maybe they'll think of a way to have like nodes where like 
use the burrow system, which I'm not horribly fond of generally. And maybe you use the burrow system mostly because I'm not used to it. Uh, to maybe combine like, and you just force all your masons to, those are their relationships. So you just kind of have a mason burrow and you could have all your different like stone based things and then they could have a hub. And then all your miners could live down and they could have a hub. And then there's no connection between them because there's minecarts there. So maybe you're running half a dozen cities that don't really talk to each other, don't get used to each other. Uh, then if something happens and something comes in and wipes one out, you could seal it off and you lose that industry, but you don't cause a tantrum spiral. So, I mean, there are some valid things there. And actually, it is 730, so I am going to go ahead and restart the cast. And, uh, and we'll get started.